Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review of a Hornby Railroad locomotive. So for those of you who might be new to the channel or for those of you who maybe haven't seen me do a Hornby Railroad Loco review yet, Hornby's Railroad range is basically a slightly cheaper range of Locos, right? And generally that range also has a lower level of detail, but the good news is that the quality is normally very, very good on them. So they make perfect models really for beginners or perhaps more casual modelers who don't care too much about detail, or I suppose modelers who are on a budget who maybe don't mind detailing up a Loco themselves as long as they can get one quite cheap. So for that reason, I really do like the railroad range. And today I've got a Loco that I've never reviewed before from the range. In fact, it's brand new to the range this year. So it's this, it is the Hornby B17. Now I've looked at a B17 before, of course, that was this one. This is the super detailed one, it's very nice. This one is, I expect, a much, a much more basic version of that. And we'll find out just how basic in just a second. So I haven't had this out of the box at the moment. It's still in its original packaging. I've not seen the model properly yet, but I strongly suspect that this will be made using the old Hornby B17 model, which was first released in 1980, I believe, which places it very nearly at 40 years old. And for many years, Hornby produced that until about 2000 and I think it was 2007, the last time it appeared in the range. So it's in the range for the first time in about 10 years, well, a little bit over 10 years, but I believe now it is loco drive and not tender drive. So as I say, yes, I bought this quite cheap. Um, I bought this from Collitz Models, I think. I can't remember how much for. Um, Hattons, if you want to pick one of these up for yourself, Hattons do have one left in stock at the time of filming. So if you're really quick, you might be able to get one. I'll put a link in the description. But as I say, there is now an even more detailed version of the B17 available, which Hornby produced again in, in the last 10 years or so. And that is also available from Hattons, not for such an expensive price either, really. It's a bit more expensive than this, but it's not too bad. Um, so again, link in the description if you want to pick one of those up. So it's very cheap. As I say, it cost me £81. The RRP is only £95 something, so less than 100 quid for a tender loco isn't too bad. So let's find out what this is like for the first time. Quite excited about this. The B17, let's do it. So yes, this is gonna be my first new railroad loco in quite a long while. And if you didn't know this already, you can always tell a Hornby railroad loco, of course, from the packaging, because the box, as you can see with this one, is half red and half yellow, which nicely gives it away and it makes it immediately clear uh, which range it is from. Obviously, the main range has a photo on the front and it's an all red box, so it's, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between them, provided they are in the boxes, of course. If I show you the end of the box, you can see exactly what is in here. So this is our 3588. It's an LNER B17 class locomotive, Liverpool, that's the name, and this one carries the number 2864. One thing the box doesn't mention is that this is in LNER green, but you can just about make that out, I think, through the window, so it should be reasonably clear. So another thing about the railroad stuff is that the liveries are normally quite simple as well on them, which makes sense, again, just to, to make them a little bit cheaper. It's necessary to have a slightly more simplified livery on them, which is fine, I think, for the money. So let's get this out then, and let's find out what this is like. Uh, yeah, another thing about the railroad range is that they don't print loads of history and background on the outside of the box, uh, which is fair enough, again, because beginners maybe aren't going to be that interested, although maybe, maybe they should be interested. I don't know. Anyway, so we have the instructions here so here we go b17 class as you can see uh, let's just open this up and have a quick look uh, so hmm, that's strange we seem to have a diagram here of a non-motorized version which is strange although it has got some of the fittings for the gears and things but the diagram doesn't show the motor well i suppose that's just done to fit all the text in but yeah anyway lubrication yes body removal which makes sense two screws it looks like um, yep, the DCC socket is in the tender as well, and it also shows you how to fit the accessories, and I believe the accessories, if it's like the rest of the Hornby Railroad stuff, uh, will just involve, and in fact I can see them in there, just involve a pair of vacuum pipes, which you can fit yourself. Right, so, I've got some tape that I'm going to have to undo here, which is uh, annoying because I forgot about that. In fact, if I can't get this off quick, no, I'm going to get some uh, snips and get it off. Oh, I've got a knife here, there we go. Shouldn't devalue the thing too much, I shouldn't think, doing something like this. Oh, there we go, just one, one little cut did it. Right, so let's open it up and have a quick look. Let's part the packaging slightly. 
Oh, well, she looks quite smart, I must say. She does look very smart. This really is a good option for you, I reckon, provided it runs okay, of course. If, you, yeah, if you're just looking for a cheap model uh, that looks great and probably runs well, uh, most of the Hornby Railroad stuff really does run well. Most of mine does anyway. Right, so here we have a little resealable bag, which is good. And inside it, yes, as I did sort of hint at, we have a couple of vacuum pipes there, uh, which are not the normal vacuum pipes. They're quite uh, tiny little ones, which obviously must be designed specifically for this model, which is nice. Uh, so, yep, you could fit those if you wanted to. It gives you something extra to do, doesn't it? So, with that then, let's see if I can't pull this out. I reckon there are holes in the back of the packaging, but I'm wondering whether I might just be able to pull it straight out. There we go. Right. So, first of all then, I've noticed something unlike the rest of the Hornby Railroad range. This loco is pretty heavy. There's quite a lot of weight to it. I wasn't expecting that. Sometimes you get the railroad locos which are a little bit light and flimsy. This one doesn't seem to be. This one seems to have a good amount of weight to it, which is great. Even the tender doesn't seem too light. And in fact, feeling it here, it feels as though the lower chassis of the tender is metal. I think it's die cast. Yeah, it certainly is. Wow, that is fantastic. That is really, really impressive. The reason being, of course, is that originally this model was tender driven. It's not anymore. They have updated it, as I say, but originally it was tender driven and therefore it was necessary to have quite a heavy tender in order to have the maximum possible traction, which makes sense. So apart from that, then visually, it looks very lovely indeed. The livery, as you can clearly tell, is quite simple but it doesn't seem to detract from the smartness of the class. And yeah, it's a, it's a smart looking model, I would say. So I'm gonna give you a bit of history on the B-17s themselves. And as soon as I've done that, I will get this up close and personal for you. And we will take a look together at some of those details. Okay, let's do it. So the B-17, it might surprise you to hear, was designed by Sir Nigel Gresley. And that's interesting because this would be his first and only class of 460 steam locos. They were first built in 1928 for passenger work on the LNER, intended to replace and also improve upon the older B12 class, which I'm sure you're familiar with, yet they couldn't exceed the weight restrictions on most parts of the railway in order to maintain their versatility. The class supposedly took inspiration from existing classes including his A1 Pacifics, the K3 and of course the O2. Interestingly, the front set of driving wheels was also driven, as well as the middle axle of course, by a third internal cylinder. This was another attempt to reduce the weight of the design and the special technical term for that was divided drive. The class were eventually rebuilt by Edward Thompson, surprise surprise, before transitioning into the BR era where they continued to serve until 1952. In total, 73 were produced between 1928 and 1937. This example, Liverpool, was built in January 1937 and she served until June 1960 when she was eventually cut up and scrapped and sadly all members of the class suffered the same fate, although the B-17 Steam Locomotive Trust have intentions of recreating a member of the class, which is exciting news. All right, so there she is then, 2864 B17 Liverpool, up close and personal for you. And to start with, I was going to say, I was going to say, you know, this obviously has all of its detail stripped right back. But of course, that isn't really true, because technically speaking, this is a fully super detailed loco. It's just a fully super detailed loco from the 1980s. And obviously in the 1980s, early 1980s, Super detailed locos were very different to the super detailed engines that we enjoy today in 2019. And so that's really what makes this such a perfect choice for Hornby in their railroad range. Obviously, it's already been designed. They don't have to spend the money tooling it up and creating a model from scratch. It's all there for them, with the exception of the mechanism, of course, which they will have had to design from scratch, I assume. But also, the fact that it is quite old, in fact, nearly 40 years old now, means that the level of detail is quite basic. It makes it perfect for beginners and obviously quite cheap to produce, which is excellent. So let's take a look at some of the different details and we'll start with the paintwork. The most obvious cutback with the paintwork is, of course, the banding on the boiler. This is quite simple. They're just sort of single bands, as you can see, no triple banding or anything like that, no slim black line between the bands, nothing like that, really just uh, very basic, which is fair enough, as I say, for a railroad model, but it is quite noticeable. We do have a little bit of paintwork on the splashes as well. In fact, that's quite nicely done, isn't it? We have got a little bit of black paintwork going on there, although you can see there would have been a builder's plate on that front splasher, although sadly there is no text on there of any kind, which would have been true in the 80s as well when this was uh, a current model. Liverpool nameplate, as you can see, is quite nicely done as well. In fact, that's one of the more nicely detailed parts of the model, as you can tell. 
The side of the cab has the running number written on it there. It's got that strange goldish paint again, which I don't like very much, but of course it's so large that it is at least legible. Again, though, quite a simplified font. It's not uh, the full LNER font that you get on the modern super detailed logos. But as you can see from the side of the cab, we also have a separately fitted handrail there, as well as nicely glazed windows, which is quite nice. You don't always get glazed windows with the Hornby Railroad stuff, so that is quite a nice thing to see. Also, the wheels are quite simple. I think on the modern Hornby B17s in the LNER green, you do sometimes get the white lining, I believe. If that's not true, please let me know. But I believe I've seen some that do, or maybe that was the B1, I'm not sure. Either way though, we have just got plain green wheels with this one. And interestingly, as you can also see, the coupling rods and linkage rods are quite chunky on this, which again makes them more suitable for children and beginners but it's not that great if you're a sort of, sort of more serious modeler. Uh, so bear that in mind. And obviously also this one has been quite severely over lubricated, as you can see. Um, in fact, Hornby have broken their own rule there, whereby if you can see the glob of oil that you've put onto a moving part, then you've used too much. Well, you can clearly see that glob there. Uh, so I might have to clean some of that up before we get it running. But apart from that, yes, uh, nice chunky running gear, which is what you want as a beginner, but not what you want as a serious modeler. So do think about that. Otherwise, though, we do have quite a few nice details and also quite a few simple details. We'll start with the nice ones. You can see we have a reverser rod pre-fitted here, which is quite good, I would say. It is made of plastic, which is a shame, but it's very, very sturdy indeed. In fact, I can touch it and it's not flexing at all. So that is really, really good. In front of the cab, a very lovely feature this, we have metal safety valves and also a metal whistle, which are really, really nice. Glad to see that. I don't like the plastic ones. And this is what I mean. Sometimes super detailed models end up with plastic fittings like that, but not this one. This one has them made of metal, which is really, really good. The smoke box door is quite a basic area of this model. As you can see, no paintwork on it at all. I can't remember whether that's prototypical though for the LNER green. I'm pretty sure the BR versions had the running number or something on the front. But as you can see, yeah, the smoke box dart at least is just molded onto the door there, which of course isn't the case with modern locos, but with the railroad range that is more than common. And as you can see, the buffer beams are quite basic, not a lot of detail going on there, but we do have metal buffers, as you can see. Uh, they're not sprung though, let me just prove that. No, they're not sprung. A feature that I did quite like is the front bogey, of all things, because it's die cast. The chassis of the front bogey is fully die cast and you've got these little steps attached to it, which look a bit strange. Uh, my modern B17 doesn't have anything like that. Uh, so whether that's just an oddity from the original model, I don't know, but either way, that's still here with this one. But it has been modified slightly to have this front NEM coupling, which is quite nice, although it does droop down quite a way. So whether that's effective or not, I'm not too sure. So as I've already said, yes, the cab has glazed windows and it also has a fair bit of interior detail. Although as far as I can tell, none of that has been painted. I don't think, no, it doesn't look like it has, but there is quite a lot of detail inside there, just molded detail, which means that there is scope for detailing that up yourself if that's something you want to do. Very quickly then, let's take a look at the tender, which I think is slightly better than the Loco itself, not only because of the underframe, which I've already mentioned is die-cast, which gives it quite a, a realistic metallic finish, I think, on the underframe at least, but the paintwork on the tender itself is quite a bit better. You can see that the lining here has slightly more complexity than the Loco did. Still no black band between these white bands on the tender, which would have made the full LNER livery, but at least we have got the double banding there, which looks nice. Although, of course, the LNER font is still the basic font, which again you should fully expect from the Hornby Railroad range. Now again this used to be a ring field tender which means the motor used to be inside here so as a result you have got this quite tall coal load um, although of course there is no motor inside there now so if you really didn't like that you could cut that out and put proper coal in there or something along those lines and you wouldn't have to worry about getting in the way of the motor or anything like that so if you really wanted to do that you could do. Around the back, you can see we have more separately fitted handrails, more relatively nice lining as well. And of course, another similar buffer beam with non-sprung buffers, but metal nonetheless, and also an M coupling on the back. And it's quite nice to see NEM couplings on this. I wasn't 100% sure whether we would or not. So there we go, that is the level of detail. Yes, it is quite basic. Of course it is, it's a railroad loco. Whether that bothers you or not will determine whether or not this is a good model for you. For me personally, I enjoy super detailed locos, but I also enjoy just basic locos that you can mess about with, that you can run and not worry about. And this might be one of those. So with performance in mind then, let's get this down onto the track and let's give it a try, shall we? Let's see how it runs. Okay, so there she is then down onto the track, ready for her first test. I'll talk a little bit about the actual mechanism and the quality of it to start with. 
Generally speaking, apart from one major flaw, the mechanism is very good, as it always is with Hornby Locos. I'm not 100% sure whether it's got a three or five pole motor inside there, but it uses the same motor that a lot of the railroad locos do, including the 440s, and the, I think it's the Hall class as well, uses the same motor. They do run well though, so whether it's five pole or three pole, I don't know, but they do seem to work okay. It does have a full set of bearings on the wheel set as well, which is very, very nice. That should lead to nice smooth running. But the one really annoying feature about this is that yes, there are wires going between the loco and tender because the, the socket is in the tender, but we have no tender pickups, which is a real shame because mostly Hornby Railroad locos do have tender pickups and that's a really nice quality feature. To be honest with you, I can't understand why they wouldn't want to put tender pickups in there. Because yes, beginners might not be too keen on the level of detail, but surely everybody needs a model that is reliable and going to work properly for them, and tender pickups is a good way to ensure that. So again, that's a bit of another classic example of Hornby not really understanding their target audience, for want of a better term. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit annoying, but otherwise, yes, the mechanism is very, very good indeed. The other thing I've noticed with this is that it's clearly been run. The wheels, particularly the front bogey wheels, are quite dirty, which suggests that either Hornby or the retailer I bought it from has had this running before, which is a little bit annoying. But I do know that this happens quite a lot. I know that retailers, for example, do sometimes take locos out to test them or sometimes even take them out to film them and use them uh, you know, for their social media material. And uh, I've heard from people that they have had models that they bought new and they found that yes, they have been used. So I wish they wouldn't do that, to be honest. It's quite annoying, isn't it? Really, you don't want anybody else handling your models when they're brand new. And of course, they're not always that careful with them. Uh, I've heard stories from others that have had damaged locos that have supposedly been tested on arrival. And it makes sense. The retailers have to process hundreds and hundreds of models every day. It stands to reason that if they are getting them out to test them, that they might not be as careful with them as you might want them to be. And so, yeah, that's a bit of a pain. And of course, the second hand price for locos is a lot different to the brand new price for Locos and so if you buy a new model you really want it to be new. That new Hornby controller that I bought a few months ago had been opened and used when I bought it because all of the packaging was torn and things. So yeah I wish they wouldn't do it. It's a pain isn't it and uh, you don't buy a TV from Argos for example and find that it's all been unpacked and used. You just don't do that do you? Um, so yeah it's an inconvenience for retailers I suppose to have broken models sent back to them because they were untested. But as a retailer, that's part and parcel of what you're supposed to offer. Yes, it's an inconvenience, but that's the way it is. You're going to have to live with it. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. Anyway, let's give this a test. Rant over. Let's see how this runs. So I'm using my Gauge Master controller this time, so it might be a little bit different. But let's give it a try and find out how this runs. Uh, also, the other thing I've had to do is I've already had to take the body off because I noticed that some of the wires were in the way of the, re uh, the rear driving wheels. Yeah and I thought that's going to cause problems, so already I've had to fix that problem as well. So not 100% happy with this so far, but it's not too bad. So, backwards first. <laughs> it's sort of, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I say this has been used, whether it's actually been run in or not, I'm not sure. Um, obviously it should be completely unused, which is what's annoyed me. But uh, yeah, the dirtiness of the wheels suggests that it has been run quite a bit. Mm, what do you reckon? That's, that's not amazing, is it? It does keep stopping. Again, if it had tender pickups, I don't think it would be doing that. Let's try again. Give it a nudge. Yeah, it's not dreadfully brilliant, that. I mean, it's a bit noisy as well. <laughs> I was going to say it's halfway smooth. I might be being unfair here because it hasn't been running yet, as far as I know. But yeah, I think we've seen better, haven't we, even from the Hornby Railroad range. Um, but yeah, that isn't too bad. So I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll let this run in. I won't make any conclusive comments about this just yet. We'll let it run in 20 minutes or so in each direction. Then we'll come back and see whether it's in a mood to do any better. So let's send this off about half speed and let's see how it goes. I must say, folks, I don't know if you can hear this, but it sounds like chitty chitty bang bang without the bang bang. It doesn't sound that good at all. It's got a really odd noise to it, which I'm hoping isn't anything serious. Hmm. 
I suppose half speed at that gauge master controller is a bit faster than half speed on the HM2000s that I used to use because it's flying. Okay, well, for the time being, we will give it the benefit of the doubt then. I'll let it run in and I'll see you in a second and we'll see if it's any better. So far, though, not overly impressive, but as I say, there's every chance it might improve having run in. So we will see. We'll see. All right, folks. Well, I have to say, I'm certainly not overly impressed with this. The noises haven't died away. It's still making the noise. And I've investigated and found that actually the connecting rods are touching the sort of piston sliders here as they run along which means that it's sort of rubbing against it and causing the noise which isn't very good and there's not really much you can do about that besides starting to bend some of these different parts of the valve gear so that they don't catch each other as they run and obviously doing that you can very easily cause more damage than you're solving so you don't really want to do that it's also very very weak it's like horrendously underpowered i measured 0.26 newtons of pulling force with this which is less than the backman 3f which is of course a tiny 060 about half the size of this so it's very underpowered also i found another serious fault with it whereby there's far too much tolerance on the coupling rods as you can see here yep moves far too much and again that's going to cause problems i reckon and that could be part of the reason why it's so dodgy at slow speeds because yeah the uh, the wheels aren't turning properly so yeah not great as i say yes it's cheap it's cheaper than the rest of hornby's range definitely however 95 pounds 99 or even 81 pounds is still an awful lot of money to pay and for that money you would at least expect a decent mechanism i mean this railroad stuff is designed for beginners right it's designed for people who are starting in the hobby if anything it needs to have a better mechanism than the rest of the range not a worse one and this one's considerably worse it's strange i don't know what they were doing i really don't know what they were thinking Either way, let's try this. We'll give it a little try and sh show you the slow speed, see if it's any better. Now it's running. Ooh, wow. No, not at all. And by the way, I have tried this on the HM2000, just in case the new controller is to blame, but it's certainly not. So that is the slowest we can go with this, which isn't dreadfully slow. I mean, it's not too bad, but yeah, it's not excellent. Yeah, and it's it's very, very loud. I don't know why it's so noisy. Well, I do, <laughs> but I don't know why it should be. There's no good reason. So, yeah, it's not amazing, to be honest with you. I've had railroad locos that run a lot better than this, which is a shame because it, it ain't that cheap, really. So, I've set up some LNER coaches, as you can see there. So, hopefully, she'll manage those. There's only four, so fingers crossed she will. Uh, let's get a couple to them, then, and see if she can. Fingers crossed. Right, I'll try and get this as slow as I possibly can, although it's difficult with this one. There we go. I think that's coupled. There we are. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, it should manage four coaches, shouldn't it? I'm sure even the 3F could have managed that, so we'll see. We'll see. Right, take it away. Yeah, you can see how the torque gets immediately zapped, can't you, as soon as the tension's taken up in the coaches. I'd say it, it does run reasonably well at the higher speeds, if I'm going to be fair. <laughs> but not as well as you'd want it to. So I've also decided I'm going to run some other 460s from the LNER alongside her. So see which ones you can spot and let me know if you spot the odd one out. Uh, I'll give you the ones that are running though. So here we have the super detailed V17, which is a better model in every aspect, I would say. Uh, so there she goes, as you can see, with a passenger train. And then on the inside line, here it comes now, we have a B1, which is a similar design, but obviously by Thompson and not Gresley. There it goes with some nice Maroon X LNER coaches, as you can see. And here comes old Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in the background now, which by the way runs very fast. That's half speed, just there, which is a bit too quick really. So yeah, not that impressed. So I must say, to be fair, it does look reasonable, doesn't it, with a nice rake of LNER teaks. It does look good with them. However, I don't know if I can really recommend it because my super detailed B17 cost me less than 100 quid. And, f you know, for such a small price difference, I would say the difference in detail and the difference in performance and every other difference you can think of is easily worth it. You know, it justifies the money. And the B17 from the main range is absolutely silent. It's a really nice, quiet run of that one. So I must say, yeah, the railroad one is not a patch on it. 
Obviously, that shouldn't be a major revelation, but uh, yes, it needed to be said, just to clarify. So yeah, I think basically that it's a decent model, it looks all right, but I think they've gone too far on the cheap and nasty front. For £95, it had no business being quite so cheap and nasty. They've gone too far, and it's obvious. Yeah, a bit silly, once again. <laughs> Goodness sake. All right, so here are some of my ratings then for the Hornby Railroad Class B17. To be honest with you, I'm not hugely impressed. I would say the fact that this is in the railroad range just about justifies the low level of detail, but as far as I'm concerned, everything else is pretty much unacceptable. So yeah, I've given the level of detail two out of five, two stars. Yep, yeah, obviously it's supposed to be that way as a railroad model, so that's fair enough. The performance though is really not very good, it's incapable of doing a slow crawl on either controller, I can't get it to do a good crawl, it runs very very noisily, it runs a little bit too fast and it's also not a great puller, 0.26 newtons is the lowest I've ever measured for a 460 of any kind and in fact it's as I say it's less than the Backman 3F which is a considerably smaller engine so not a great performer. The mechanism is pretty poor as well, I mean the motor seems okay and it has got the proper bearings on the wheel set, but that's about the only good thing I can say about it. It's got no tender pickups which will lead to some reliability issues, the running gear doesn't work properly, there's too much give on the coupling rods and parts of the valve gear rub together which produce that horrible noise as it runs. It was over lubricated which might sound like I'm nitpicking but obviously over lubrication can seriously damage a mechanism, particularly if it floods the motor, so that's a problem as well. Yeah, the mechanism left an awful lot to be desired. Quality then though, I must say the build quality at the very least was very good. I don't want to penalise the mechanism again under the quality category, so apart from that, yeah, the quality was pretty good and the value was okay as well. I've given that four star. I think for £95.99 you would expect a lot more. However, for £81 that isn't too bad. Yes, it's certainly a lot less than Hornby's main range, but obviously it's still quite a lot of money, so I think it ought to have been better given that massive price tag. Overall then, that is 5.69 out of 10. Yes, not amazing this time. Into the ranking it goes. 37th, second to the bottom, above the Backman USA Prairie and below the Hornby s and djr 2P. Yes, obviously it's an awful lot better. It's nowhere near as bad as the Backman Prairie was. However, it was also a lot more expensive, which means that overall it doesn't come out that much better. So let me know what you think folks, is it a decent model or is it not? I'll put up a poll for you right now. Sadly for me I think overall not, yep, can't say I like this one too much. Alright then folks, well I hope you enjoyed this review, um, yeah not as positive as I'd like to have been about it obviously as someone who loves the railroad range and to be honest it's gotten me a little bit nervous to be honest, I'm hoping that Hornby aren't going to ruin the railroad range and its good name with models like this because obviously the, the last new release to the railroad range that I reviewed, uh, or one of the last, the 14XX had similar just preposterous design faults with the mechanism which also gave it similar, in fact, even more dramatic performance problems. So yeah, I'm hoping this isn't going to be a regular thing now with the railroad range, because it was good. It's a good range, and I hope they don't ruin it. But apart from that, folks, thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you thought. Was I right? Was I wrong? Whichever you think is absolutely fine, but do tell me. I would like to know. And for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Have a great week, and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.